What's up dudes? Today is a very special day. We are gonna be visiting my alma mater, Stanford. You know, we hit a big milestone, 1,000 subscribers, so I love you guys so much, and I really appreciate you guys, so here, we're gonna go to Stanford, we're gonna see what it's like, and I'm gonna give some stories while I tour Stanford. Then we're gonna hit up some other places I really like in the Bay. Yeah, we'll give it one last, one last go around and see how it goes. All right, let's do this. We have made it to Stanford. I'm wearing my Stanford hoodie so that no one suspects that I'm no longer a student. So yeah, we're just gonna step outside, walk around. I'm gonna tell you guys some stories about my time here and um, hopefully I don't get too bad of social anxiety from recording in public. All right, let's go do this. Over there, we have the legendary Ariaga Outdoor something something, which is where I used to go to the gym every night at like 10 p.m. to get yoked. Uh, court inside there is Lakeside Dining, which was not kind to me my freshman year, but I guess it provided me with sustenance, which is good. Oh yeah, Stanford implemented this neighborhood thing. I guess this is the R neighborhood. Probably don't want to live here because this is really far from main campus. We got some dudes playing soccer. Bicyclist. No parking in railings. Stanford Rebellion. It's Robley Gym, which is uh, not actually a gym, and I never went to. Seems pretty dead right now, which is good for my self-conscious ass recording this stuff. There's mother frickin' Robley. I live my freshman year. I would not say Robley treated me well. I was kind of banished to this one random corner in Robley where I didn't really make too many friends. I wouldn't really recommend living in Robley. Robley's really big, so like it's hard to find community. That window right there. Legacy of one scene. Hope the people living there are having a better time than I did. This is the infamous stop sign. So if you guys watch one of my older videos, right here is where I made a crazy left turn from there to here. And a police car was like right behind me coming down this way and almost hit me as I made this left turn. And then the cop car like followed me into there, into where that golf cart is, and like harassed me. And I totally lied and said that there was a stop sign when I didn't know there was a stop sign. But guess what, there's a, there's a freaking stop sign right there. There's a stop sign as that car just stopped there. So I was right. We're approaching the row. So if we go that way. The street will be full of these row houses, where a bunch of frats are, a bunch of drunk people wander this street at night on the weekends. Yeah, everyone says you're supposed to live in a row house your senior year, but that never really happened for me. If you are drunk after a night on the row, you might find yourself walking down this way to tap. I think this is like a music center for this building, but I never played music at Stanford, so. This is one of the central hubs of Stanford here. We got a post office here. Did I ever get any important mail? No, not really. All right, we're gonna go total recon mode. I'm gonna sling this camera over my shoulder so it doesn't seem like I'm recording, but I totally am. We got the legendary tap right here. I'm gonna get my nightly chicken tenders and a waffle fries meal when I was depressed. Old Union, bunch of study areas here. Let's see if we can get in. Monday to Friday, not today. This is the fountain at Old Union. Fun story, I fell into this fountain once when I was intoxicated. It's a lot deeper than it looks, and I got pretty soaked. It doesn't look that deep, but this is like freaky deep or something. There's the bookstore with the overpriced books, and everything in there is super overpriced, so I don't think we really need to go in there. Doge, a wall full of stuff. Mike Pence is gonna be here, apparently. We'd rather have a gay son or a thought daughter. What was the last part? I didn't get it. Would you rather have a gay son or a thought daughter, Mr. Vice President? Once I fell on my bike over there, and it was really embarrassing because there were a bunch of people in front of Koopa, and I just had to get up and disgracefully get on my way because I was late to class. And over there, it's Green Library, the big ass library on campus. It's a good place to study. There's a cool little room on like the fifth floor that's like really awesome. Over here, we got Crothers, probably the worst place to live on campus. Which I said they should turn into all freshman housing, and I think they actually did. So you're welcome, Mark Tessie Levine. The place is just full of one room doubles, and it's like really old. It's just like jail, basically. <laughs> I yeah, pulled over once here on the side of the street, biking home from the gym, not having a bike light. I had to like go to this class without bike lights. That wasn't fun. Lady on the bike just 
gave me a weird look for recording. Public shame, public shame. As you can see, the grad students get way more decked out housing, probably because they're not little shits who just graduated from high school and they actually need nice places to live. I had a class once that was like basically model UN, and we had, did a bunch of shit here. Encino Hall. This is this is the street where the admissions office is, I believe. So if you go down there, you can go beg them in person to let you into Stanford, even though it's not that good. Just a tip. Here we are at the fountain. Hopefully, I don't get killed by any bicyclists. You got your super view of the Hoover Tower. Wow, so majestic. There's a 24-hour study lounge there, which is open. This place, I'm fond of this place. This is the one place on campus I don't hate. This is main quad. It's probably what you think of stereotypically when you think about Stanford campus. We got the oval here. So named because it's shaped like an oval. Capsule in here, I guess. I didn't have any say in what got put there, but whatever. Onward. We're gonna take a quick detour to the CS building. Got some statues. Can't really tell that they're statues, but they are. Oh, short kings. Some fellow short kings. Nice. We're making my way downtown. We got this smallest fountain on campus. We got the CS department building. And over here, we got the Hewlett. Packard Buildings had a bunch of classes in here because they throw all the intro-level classes here because this is the only place big enough on campus to fit everyone, I guess. And some frickin' EE labs in here. That was like the worst time of my life, having EE lab at like 8 p.m. at night. Would not recommend. Got some whiteboards here for some reason. Engineering quad, quite beautiful. And they installed all these marble big globe thingies here for some reason. I'm not sure why, but here they are. This is also one of the better places on campus, I'd say, at least in terms of architecture and vibes. Huang had a lot of CS classes there. And we got these big old walls just hanging around here. shoot through here, we will basically be back at Norcliffe where we started. It's kind of crazy coming back here and being all nostalgic and reliving it, but I think it was, uh, it made me who I am, so that, that's that, I guess. I do want to stop by Governor's Corner, because that's where I did dishwashing my first year at Stanford, and just want to relive those happy memories of when I love dishwashing. All right. A lot of white dudes doing white dude activities, so I'm not go there, but yeah, that's where I did dishwashing. Went for my bike got crushed. Part of a D, but we're gonna abstain from white dude activity and just turn around. Yeah. That was the tour of Stanford. Hope you guys enjoyed. Alright, we are back. That was a interesting time at Stanford. Came back to walk my dog. Say hi, Moose, to the fans. And now, we're gonna go to Falafel Stop, one of my favorite places to eat in the Bay. Um, but yeah, let's go do that. All right, we are at one of the most lit, focus, lit places in the Bay. If I could take you up in paradise up above If you would tell me I'm the only one that you love Her life would be a dream Sweetheart, hello, hello again Shaboom and open with me again Right, we have obtained the Falafel stuff but actually took a lot quicker than I thought it would Normally it takes like 20 minutes because they have like a... Her life could be a dream If only all my precious plans would come true If you would let me spend my whole life loving you Her life would be a dream All right, so I made a post when I hit a thousand subscribers saying I would answer any questions that were left in the comments. I got one question and I'm a man of my words, so here I am answering that question. What do you think about Stoic philosophy, i.e. Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, and the like? Now, when I think about Stoicism, I think about guys who like to read philosophy and go to the gym to find inner peace. But, as I learned from skimming the Wikipedia page, Stoicism is actually not about hiding your emotions and burying them deep within you. The original Stoics thought the key was to understand your emotions 
not bury them. And they thought that virtue, aka morals, were the only good thing in the world, and stuff like money and pleasure were just vehicles for us to show our true virtue. So yeah, what do I think about that? I think it's good to understand your emotions, because if you understand your emotions, that's the first step to not letting them control you. And I also think it's wise to not think about these external things as good or bad, right? Money isn't always a good or bad thing. It really is just a reflection of who you are as a human. One thing I will say is I do think at some point you just gotta follow your heart, man. You gotta follow your emotions and not always follow logic. So, stoicism seems good to me from what I saw on Wikipedia.